What's up, guys? My name is Ty, and today we're going to react to Piers Morgan. Now, I'm no fan of Piers Morgan, but I can say that he puts out some, some entertaining content. You know, he brings some of the most craziest people on these panels, and they just say some of the most outlandish things to the point to where they be trolling people or they're just completely misinformed. And I got to say, it's very entertaining and flat out funny. A lot of it. Um, before I get to these clips, I'm going to play you guys a couple of clips. But before I get to these clips, make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, and follow on my um, page. I have to make, you know, I have to be careful what I say on this on this platform because they like to not show my videos. And some of them, they just flat out just take down for whatever reason. If you want the uncensored content, go over to my Rumble page. I can pretty much do whatever I want to do over there on Rumble. You know, I know I know a lot of people is not on there, but I'm building my Rumble page up also. So go and check that out whenever you guys get time. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a couple of these uh, clips on Piers Morgan. And then I'm going to react throughout the video and give you my analysis. Let's rock and roll. But Donald Trump has been convicted um, because he slept with a, prop, a porn star 20 years ago and may have shuffled some business papers about it. Um, but why is it good for America that one of your 46 presidents uh, has been treated in such a humiliating manner over something so trivial? And why do you guys not see that this might help him rather than hinder him in the election? I happen to believe, Piers, that it's good for America when you hold the person who has the highest office in the land to the standards of the American law. And in this case, New York state law, where he committed these crimes. I happen to believe that it is a telltale sign of coming totalitarianism, fascism, skirting of the law when you allow a president to simply do whatever he wants and actually never hold him accountable. Well, look, the reality is this, is that these aren't crimes that were on the books in every single state. These are crimes that are on the books in New York state, as we talked about, all right? And so he knew exactly what was what what he was doing. In fact, this is the most important part is that David Pecker of the National Enquirer refused to keep on paying his hush money payments because the dude was tired of getting paid back in expired Trump stakes. And he was like, no, I'm not going to do it this time, especially not with a porn star. And so Michael Cohen had to do the payments on behalf of Donald Trump. Michael Cohen already spent three years mostly on house arrest, but he was already sentenced to three years over this. This is squarely Trump's making. This has nothing to do with his base. It has nothing to do with protecting American democracy like happened on January 6th, um, according to them. This has to do with Trump making his bronze, bronzer stained bed with a porn star trying to cover it up and then getting caught doing it. And out of interest, before I go to Michael, um, out of interest, why is Bill Clinton able to have sex with an intern in the Oval Office when he's president and lie to the American people about it on national television? And why is he able to pay off Paula Jones $850,000, four times as much, five times as much as the Trump payment to Stormy Daniels, um, to get rid of a sexual harassment claim, again, while he's president? And he has no criminal court recourse for that. Why is that deemed to be better than what happened with Trump and Stormy? I, I don't think anyone is making that case, Piers. I'm no, not I'm here asking to you. What's Bill the Clinton difference? Or any, What's the difference? Or any predator. The difference is, is that he didn't cook the books financially using his own, like, using back channels in order to pay. So paying that somebody off who off. says you sexually harassed her, paying nearly a million dollars while you're the president of the United States, and then having sex with an intern in the Oval Office and lying about it. That's fine, because he's a Democrat. No, Piers, only, only the leftists in your mind are making that argument. Sorry? I said only the Democrats and the leftist mob in your mind are making that argument uh, that you're opposing to it. I will say this about Storm. What it is is that no, no matter what Donald Trump do, they, you know, he's guilty of it. And he basically, you know, Pierce just basically told her that, like, why, what's so different about the Democratic Party doing it or Bill Clinton doing it? It's like if a Democrat do something, it's OK. If a Republican do something, it's the end of the effing world, you know. But um, let's continue. Daniels, I think it's incredible that she accepted one hundred and thirty thousand uh, dollars from Michael Cohen, because honestly, if I had the misfortune of sleeping with Donald Trump, 
no matter what the circumstances, let's say I had mad cow and then I did DMT on an empty stomach. If I had the misfortune of sleeping with Donald Trump, there is no amount of money you could pay me to keep quiet about it because I would never tell a single soul. I would fake my own death and move to the Galapagos and pretend to be a bird. I mean, I would say it's very unlikely you would ever get the offer, but you do look quite like Karen McDougall, funny enough. <laughs> I mean, he just insulted this one. <laughs> My bad, guys. But <laughs> she don't like that. I mean, it is very true. I mean, it's it's not like he trying to kill himself to sleep with somebody like this woman. I mean, this woman is so full of herself. Let's continue. Oh, so I'm not I'm not cute enough to. Uh, no, to I just said you cost. are. Is I said you're, you're very much in his. Uh, no. Compliment. Yes. Yeah, it was, it was actually it was a compliment. Go to Michael. <laughs> Michael, look, I. I she not ugly, but I'm just saying, that, that, come on, man, let's continue. I do think there's a, a ridiculous double standard here that will come back and bite the Democrats for the reasons that Mark Garrigal said about historically, you know, you, you've seen this coming a mile off where both parties starting to ratchet up this concept of kind of going after each other's leaders in criminal courts. I mean, you see this normally in banana republics, not in the United States of America. And it really does worry me as someone who loves America and loves Americans, what this is leading to. Because if, if all that happens in each term of office is one party trying to incarcerate the other's leader, I don't know where that leaves America in a few years' time. Well, this will only come back to bite Democrats if they lose their grip on power, and obviously they don't think that they will. This is why President Biden the other day, when he was walking out of a press briefing, was asked, Mr. President, Donald Trump says that you are imprisoning him because he's your political rival. What do you say to that charge? Well, we have the, we actually, walking. I'll stop you there. We have the clip. Let's play the clip. Mr. President, can you tell us, sir, Donald Trump refers to himself as a political prisoner and blames you directly. What's your response to that, sir? Do you think the conviction will have an impact on the campaign? I mean, you look we like Jack, hear... Jack Nicholson in The Shining at the end of that, but... Uh... Facts. The way he turned around and that evil look was like, I got him exactly where I wanted him. You know, I'm no fan of Joe Biden, man, but I mean, the way he looked was just, it was just so satisfying. You know, the, you know the, what they doing to Donald Trump. And I'm talking about the Democratic Party, you know. Let's continue. Um, it, yeah, I mean, Michael, to pick up your point there, that's the clip you're referring to. Yes, and it's pretty clear this is not a man who thinks that he has to be accountable to the American people. When you look at the federal charge against Trump, there was a poll that came out when that charge was brought that showed 62% of Americans think that it's primarily politically motivated. They just don't seem to care. And so this has been a ratcheting up, as we've all noted on the panel, of trends that have been built up for some years now. Some would say going back to Richard Nixon. But certainly in the early Trump campaign, the Democrats tried to stop him from being president by spying on him and cooking up fake intelligence, ironically enough, with Russia. And that didn't work. Then they tried to throw him out by impeaching him twice. That didn't work. Then they tried to kick him out by rigging the election and changing all the voter rules, in some cases, in contravention of state constitutions leading up to that election. That did get him out of office, and he did leave office, but then he didn't go away. He kept running again. So then they indicted him four times. Now they've convicted him. They're going to threaten to throw him in prison. Pretty soon they're going to threaten to send him to St. Helena. But this has absolutely nothing to do with the law. As was noted earlier, at most you're talking about a, a misdemeanor that would have already expired under the statute of limitations. I'm not even convinced that there was really a misdemeanor that Trump committed. So my fellow panelist here is celebrating that, that the rule of law has has been vindicated and overturned 234 years of American legal tradition, I would challenge her to see if she could possibly articulate how and what crime Trump committed, because so far Alvin Bragg, the DA, has failed to do so. The, the judge in the case, Judge Marchand, has failed to do so. And they can't do it because Trump didn't commit any of the crimes for which he's been convicted. Well, let's just ask quickly, before I go to Kevin, Francesca, just on that point, what crime did Trump commit? He, it was, it was camp, it was financial crimes. It was white collar crimes. It was, it, what that was is it? exactly Which what one they though? charged him. It was, he was convicted on. What was the crime? It's New York state law. No, I understand. What's the, it, what was the crime? It is New Francesca, I got I, I don't even, like, it, it is well, literally, on, on, he just got convicted on 34 counts. Francesca, what of, was the of, crime? Of, of, like, cooking the actual books. What was the crime? You are not allowed, so you are not allowed to, to use your own financial, like your own money, to pay off somebody, and then he wrote, he he logged it as something different. 
he logged it as just a regular payment, but he was actually paying off this porn star to keep quiet, which, if he hadn't been running for president, would not have mattered, but he was, and so it impacted campaign finance laws in New York State. Okay, that is what one Merchant just oversaw this. Okay. Alan Bragg okay. brought these charges that's, because that's Michael not, Cohen and Sixer was happened. already okay. sentenced okay. to three years okay. to do it. Okay, let's just go before... Kevin, I'd be very, very, very patient. Well, I will come no, to you. Look, I'm no expert. Let me just say, hang on. No, no, Michael, Francesca. You are no expert. By that's the way. Francesca. Because the campaign finance wait, 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 law is a federal wait. law. Hang on, anyway, Francesca. Yeah. I want to go to Mark. You're the lawyer. Is there anything Francesca... She's no expert, but she's sitting here trying to tell people. I mean, she can't even answer a direct question what were the crimes that donald trump was convicted of and people are still trying to figure that out to this day you know and like everybody know that it's a kangaroo sham court that they putting donald trump through everybody know it's bullshit just call it for what it is bro everybody know this and she can't answer not one question my thing is why would she even come on this panel and she's so uninformed you know, just in my opinion, you know, she'll show up on this panel, a person like her. I'm not saying that she's unintelligent because I actually checked out. I did a little research on her, whatever. Um, she's actually a, a political activist and she got some, you know, she got some OK videos. I don't follow her or nothing like that. I just check some of them out. But for her to come on here and just completely just um, not know anything, can't answer a simple question. But that's what a lot of libtards do and a lot of feminists do and a lot of people that's anti-Trumpers or let's just put it like this, that has TDS, Trump Derangement Syndrome for the people who don't know. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play another clip. Um, get right to it. So this happened at the UFC fight. Dana White let him out. And this is just after he... And this this is just a little short clip. I'm trying not to make the video too long, guys. But this is just a short clip, to, you know, about this woman. I just want you guys to pay attention to this because this was like comical to me. Being convicted of, of 34 counts of of this uh, crime. Take a look at what the crowd reacted. Pretty cool for Sean Strickland to have a moment there with Donald Trump after a win. President Trump, you're the man, bro. It is a damn travesty what they're doing to you. I'll be donating to you, my man. Let's get it done. I mean, by that, the way, follow, that followed by the, the way, entrance. Pierce, Sorry, Mark. By the way, Pierce, if uh, I have spent the last two days having people talk to me at a conference I'm at, telling me that the, one of the phenomenons on TikTok, as Kevin invoked it, is people saying, I'm voting for the felon, I'm voting for yeah. the felon. Yeah. I'm telling you this. Facts, I'm voting for the felon also, guys. You know, if he's a convicted felon, I'd rather vote for him than to vote for sleepy Joe Biden, who has no idea what's going on, but let's continue. But, but see, you want a poll? I'll give you a poll. Take a look at what's happening there at the UFC fight and take a look at what's happening on TikTok. Yeah, I mean, we're watching the end. This is when he came in. I mean, the place went completely nuts. And this, the, the trouble is, Francesca, I spent a lot of time in New York and LA. I have a place in LA and spent a lot of time working in New York. But I also do a lot of crime documentaries, ironically, which take me down to rural Florida, rural Texas, Alabama, places like that. And let me tell Mar -a -Lago. you, let me tell you, none of them agree with you. They all agree with that crowd at the UFC. And if I was a Democrat, I'd be quite unnerved that you've thrown the kitchen sink at this guy. And this is how a lot of the public are reacting. Facts. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it makes sense that he'd be cheered at UFC. I mean, you know, they, it's, it's, a, it's a sport full of actors. And we have this uh, guy who's been pretending to that. be a serious politician for years now. Look, the, well, the important thing about in, that interview sorry, that gave on, Fox News... You're not bespurching the UFC. Thing about hang the Fox on. News, Hang on, fact check. You'll think you're WWE, the actors. The UFC, they're real fighters. She didn't say that. Uh, uh, yes, I'm oh, sorry. I I don't have... Cool, good. I'm glad. Look, There's a I big difference. One is actors. Yo. This woman couldn't have thought that, bro. And that's why I said when I watched this before, I thought it was like some kind of parody or something like that because you cannot be serious to think that UFC fighters are actors 
or even WWE for that matter. What the hell, bro? I'm like, wow, who, what, what is he bringing on this panel? And I had to look at it again because I'm like, okay, she's a comedian. But even so, bro, you come on here and you so uninformed about that, bro. You couldn't be serious to say that. UFC fighter. What UFC fighter after a press conference? My bad. What what wrestler? And I know wrestlers don't have press conference. But even after a match. Because the wrestlers have to be ready for the next show. Do they look like a boxer or a UFC fighter after they match? Hell no, bro. And I'm a big WWE fan. Attitude error. But what wrestler look like? Even when they get juice in a match, bro, they do not look nothing like a UFC fighter when the fight is over with. That is crazy. <laughs> that is crazy in itself. Thing. One is hardcore elite fighting. They're very different things. I don't have video feed, but I bet it's dope, and I and I and I stand corrected, Piers. But I will say this: with the interview that he gave um, on Fox and Friends, I do think it matters because what he said was the American people aren't going to stand for this, and. In some ways, he's saying, you know, he's warning Judge Mershon, and I sort of agree that I don't think Judge Mershon, even though all y'all think that it's some sort of political hit job, they're not going to put him in jail, sadly for me. I hope they give him some sort of, like, community service, soup kitchen situation. I'd love to see that, whatever is on his head. I'm going to stop the video right there, guys. And what I'm going to say is this. Um, she probably looking for jail time i mean this woman is clearly uninformed but what i'm gonna say about donald trump i don't i don't think that they'll put him in jail but to my you know but at the same time i think that they are stupid enough to try it even at this point because look how far they didn't push this look how far they didn't push the line you know and if, if they put him in jail they go effectively make him a martyr i think that they didn't personally did it already but putting him in jail you go make him a martyr he's gonna win the election he's gonna win the election anyway and then we on our way back to peace and prosperity you know just in my opinion i got him winning the election i'm gonna just say it you know he's not losing this and like i said i vote for a convicted felon any day that i vote for a president that don't even know he living in this world you know, and I got a lot of trolls out there. You know, they call in names and they talk a lot of shit, but I don't care. You know, my thing is, is that shout out to Piers Morgan. Shout out to the panel. And this Francesca <laughs> Firotini, whatever her name is. I, I'm killing this woman's name. You know, it's comical, man. You know, she's a comedian. I haven't seen none of her stuff, but that was funny in itself. And for you to come on here to be so uh, misinformed about the topics that you that she was talking about which is crazy i didn't want to show the whole video because it'll be forever um and i didn't want to make the video too long but i hope you guys like the video and make sure you like share subscribe and follow help my channel grow and don't forget to hit that notification button so you'll know every time i drop a new video my name is ty i'm out peace